I grew up on Nintendo and I love all things Mario, so I was thinking about a simple carving, knife only, that I could do as a tutorial. Well, this one came to mind. I did this as a one by one a while back, and it works just as easily on a one by one as it does on a two by two. Now today I'm gonna carve on a two by two, but you can do this easily on a one by one if you'd like to. I'm gonna have a separate video for, for painting, so you can see how I do three different finishes on these guys here, the red one, the green one, and a purplish pink one. And we'll do all that in a second video, but go ahead and watch this one, and we'll get into the carving here, and you'll see how we take a two by two block and turn it into a Mario mushroom. You can do this <clears throat> any way you want to. I've got two different two by two blocks here. One is two inches tall, and this one is two and a half inches tall. So you can do a little bit of different flair to it if you want to, but I think the, the two by two by two is the exact right size for this. So just to show you, two by two by two. So with a two by two block that's perfectly square, the first thing you wanna do is make sure that we're carving with our grain direction going up. So you can see the grain direction here is right like so. Same, same. It's easier to see on this side right here. So you can see the grain direction. So that's gonna make it a little bit easier. Now <clears throat> we're gonna make this cylindrical first. So we're gonna carve off all four corners and I'm gonna start by going in the side and out the top just like so and this is gonna be knife only we're not gonna need any other tools just a knife this is gonna be a nice simple one this would be a good first time whittle for anyone nothing complex nothing complicated Super simple. And uh, simple is good, you know, like some of the carvings we've got on the channel are more complicated, a little bit more time consuming. This one will be nice and easy to get into, easy to get done, quick and simple, if that's what you're looking for. And if you're a fan of like Mario and that kind of thing, it's a fantastic carving to try. It's not to Good start. Let's try this direction a little bit too, huh? It's a little bit quicker, or easier I should say, with that paring cut. I can get a little more speed in there. Start to round out pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Now let's do the other side. Same thing here, and we're just taking it off on the corner. Be a little bit more careful when you come this direction because you can bite into that wood and take off a big chunk. If you do that, be mindful of the fact that uh, if it lets loose here, you could wind up chipping a big chunk off and it might chip off more than you want to. So be very mindful of that grain direction and don't chip off more than you want to. So just keep an eye on it, so to speak. Think about what's happening, pay attention to your blade and how it's cutting into the wood so you can avoid that. Same thing in this corner. And we're almost done. With rounding this off. The real difficulty I have with the paring cut is not the cut itself. It's fantastic. The difficulty is that 
when I'm doing it, I'm throwing all these shavings at myself. And so they go everywhere. They go behind me. They go on me. And they make a mess. But it seems to be, to me, the easiest way to get the most work done quickly and efficiently. There's what cutting into that wood there, I'm dripping and tearing a little bit. But in this instance, I don't mind. Okay, so we got that mostly rounded off. We're gonna repair that a little bit, round it off a bit more in some of those corners. And you can look at it and adjust as you need to, to round that edge off. So, this side here. And we'll have more there. And then we got mostly cylindrical. You can see here where it tore a little bit. It's a little bit further down than I want it to be. But that's okay because we'll put the top of that uh, mushroom there or we can put the base of the mushroom there. We can adjust our design to fit how we need to. Okay, so now, let me clean these up. Okay, so we got that cylinder made. Now take a look at the overlay, and you can see that we're going to just be rounding off one side. So we're going to round off the top, and we're going to have to round it off probably from the midsection here up. So we're going to round off the corner here and here, along with the front and back as well. And this is going to take a while, so just take your time and work your way around the carving. The blade I'm using today is a, uh, this is a detail blade actually. A Badger State Blade detail blade. And uh, I think it's a, an inch and a half. Oh. It is an inch and a half inch blade. So for those who are curious, inch and a half Badger State detail blade. For a small carring like this, a detail blade works just fine. And I'm doing a lot of ingrain cuts here. And for the Badger State blade, I like it because it's a bit thicker of a blade. As you can see right here, right? And because it's a bit thicker of a blade, it's a bit stronger, a bit hardier for a carving like this, where I'm using it a lot for that paring cut and whatnot, and I can be a little rougher with this than say uh, that detail knife I got from Flash Little Retriever that's thinner, and that Helvy detail knife that's thinner. I wouldn't use those two to do this because they're a bit too thin. And I'd be worried about chipping the blade or breaking the blade. But this detail knife, being thicker and a little bit hardier, does fantastic in this situation. So, just something to keep in mind. That's why I like having multiple blades. Different blades for different workloads gives you more options. And I like having options. Alrighty. I'm just going to work on the other direction a little bit here. A lot of ingrain work when you're rounding this off. And that ingrain work will really show you how sharp your knife is or how dull it is. And you can work this from different directions. You can come in like this 
find the direction that might be easier and work it from that direction you know you'll see me rotating and carving a lot as I do this using pairing cuts or straight cuts push cuts to find the optimal angle of attack and a lot of carving is just that just figuring out the right angle to carve from so that's easy to carve and then I'm not fighting it but some of those cuts are going to be fighting it as I figure out where the right spot to carve from is going to be so that I'm not fighting it as much right so keep that in mind be ready to move around a bit as you figure it out sorry for the song cue but I'm working on Mario related stuff it's like that song is in my head I don't mind it I like that I played so much Mario back in the day if you're anything like me these little mushrooms are uh, they're nostalgic you know bringing back childhood I'm not even childhood anymore even my, my kids are of that age where I'm playing Mario games with them sometimes Mario Kart other Mario games they're at that age where they really like that kind of thing it's amazing that Mario survived the test of time to that extent okay we've got them mostly rounded off that's looking pretty good I'm just going to double check it, adjust in some spots, clean it up a little bit. I was working really quick here. Some spots are a little bit rougher than others. Right? i just go through and clean them up. Okay, so look at that mess. All right, so we got that mostly rounded off along the top. Now, you can see on this guy here, or look on the overlay, we're just gonna barely go up along the bottom here, and then we're gonna bring that edge in. So I'm gonna come in right about here. How far is that? Let's see here. So I'm gonna come up. Oh, <laughs> that's just a half an inch. So. <laughs> That's a pretty good eyeball. All right, so there's about a half inch up. Draw a line around here if you need it. I probably don't need it, but if you do, just draw like so. Now you notice how I came around and I made, met almost just perfectly right there, right? I'm using that pinky finger. Here's an old carpenter's trick to, to measure here in. So I put the pencil right where it's going to be. I put my pinky right there and I keep the position using the finger to hold that position as I move the pencil around. So if you haven't seen that trick before, or if you haven't picked that up before, that's what I'm doing to keep that line all the way in line as I go around the carving. So, just food for thought. And now, I'm just going to do little V-cuts here around the edge, just to set in that line. So come in from the top at an angle, come in from the bottom, and then ship it out like so. And we're going to do this all the way around, then we're going to take off the bottom, and then we're going to do it all the way around again to get in a little bit deeper to just create that little shelf down to the bottom of the mycelium to give a difference between the stem and the cap of the mushroom. It's not like a real mushroom, it's a cartoon style mushroom, but it still has a cap and a stem. But uh, the Mario mushrooms don't have any gills that you might see on bigger mushrooms and real mushrooms on the mushroom men that I do I'm always putting in gills but we're not putting any kind of gills on this we're going just for that Mario mushroom look okay so we got that started there and now we're just gonna break that off a bit 
try to straighten it out with the bottom of that V. Okay, so we've got that started, right? Now we're going to same thing again. We're going to deepen that line here. So, V again. All the way around. We'll see, is two pass enough? If not, we'll do three. Chips just going everywhere. Some people can be fine with those sitting everywhere. I can't. I've got to move them around, get them out of the way. Okay, so we've got that set in a little bit deeper. And again, same thing we did the first time. We're just going to go around and slide that bottom off like so. Just like that. Okay, now we started to get that in deeper. We can look at our uh, example here. Look at the overlay on the screen right there. See, I'm looking at that. Now, the one that we're carving here, that's the one you're seeing in the overlay. So I don't see an overlay here right now. I see nothing there. But what you see, that's what we're carving right now. And uh, if you haven't been around here before and you haven't seen that overlay, that's what that is. I'm going to go a little bit deeper here around here just to really set the bottom of this cap in a little bit better. I don't like the way it was looking compared to this other finished one. I feel like it needed to be more of a sheer angle along the bottom. So I'm just going to fix that. What I mean is like the cap wasn't coming in quite as quick to the stem. I didn't like the look of it the way it was set, so we're just going to fix it. Doesn't take long to fix. We're already here. We already got the knife. We can do it. Okay, that's looking about what we need, right? But now we still got to add that swoop in there for the face of this little guy. So let's do that real quick. We are going to put that in right about like so. That may be a little too high. And when you're drawing this in, do not feel bad if you've got to adjust it, right? That is absolutely okay. The reason you're penciling it in, in the first place is so you can adjust it if you need to, right? Because if you just start carving it in and realize you did it wrong, what can you do? Nothing. It's a subtractive art what we're doing here. So every time you cut something off, you can't get it back. Drawing saves you that time, saves you that effort. So. On this here, I'm going to go in slightly angled in. So if you're looking at this direction, I'm angling in like this and I'm going to bring it all the way around 
angling down so that the inner edge of that is sloped and you can see it better like right here it's just kind of sloped in a little bit right so sloping it in see it's kind of splitting a little bit well that's okay that's the side we're taking out And we're just gonna chip that stuff out of there, slice it out. It looks a little dirty right now, it looks a little rough. That's okay. It's a hard angle to get stuff out of there. Now we can get it out and clean it up. see all these carvings by absolutely fantastic carvers and some of them can have perfect cuts I'm sure every time the first time I am not that guy and most of them aren't either most of them carve something and it doesn't look that great the first time through with the knife and the, the reason they're so good is because they take the time to fix things they take the time to go back in there and correct things as they carve but you don't always see that on a lot of these guys because they're not making videos. They're not showing you their process all the time unless you go to a, a class or a seminar and you get to sit down with them and carve right next to them. You don't see the times when their carvings don't look great. And that makes it easy for us to judge ourselves and say, man, I am nowhere near what he does. But that's only because maybe you didn't make as many passes with your knife to clean things up. Maybe it didn't take the time that he took to do it as thoroughly. And there we go. That is pretty much good. Let's go ahead and clean that up a little bit more right there. Same thing on the other side. A little bit more. And then we will pencil in some eyes just so you get that uh, Mario effect. Ba -dum -ba -ba -dum -ba -ba. So that's what we got. Time for the money shot. There they are all finished up. Now the red guy is just red paint and white paint. The green guy is dry brushed two different colors of green. And the pinkish purple guy is blended colors. So if you want to know more about blending colors, watch the painting video. And uh, I think of these three finishes, I like the red one uh, the most because the wood is left unfinished. That's a really great effect. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if this was any kind of value to you, and watch more videos on the channel. I really appreciate you guys watching, and uh, if you want to help support the channel, head over to Etsy and buy one of those carving stickers I've got over there if you'd like to. And if not, thank you so much for watching, and watch one of these other videos on the screen here. Have a good one, guys.